What's up GQ Sports? This is Cam Jordan, New Orleans Saints defensive end, and this is how I spent my first million dollars. My relationship with money is I live broke. And at one point in my childhood, my parents gave me a checkbook and like made me keep all my earnings going to high school. But I'm over there shopping at, you know, TJ Maxx, Ross, Dillard's. It was the Foot Locker, five for 20s. Man, my first job uh, was when I got to college, I was a peer advisor. Gave out the opening statements to the, to the athletes coming in, in front of their parents about this is what to expect as a freshman, this is what we're gonna do. And I did that for a couple years. Um, before that, it was just volunteer work. Then I was a bouncer. But that's, that's a whole nother life. Y young Cam got into some trouble and my dad wouldn't bail me out of the trouble. So I had to pay him back, pay the lawyer fees back, pay, uh, and then it, the money got good. So, I mean, when you start off in college making like 17 an hour, and then somewhere after like the first year, you're making like 25, 26 an hour. I was low key balling. I truly didn't think I was making a pro until I got to the league and I saw guys who I played with, guys who I found like comparable talent level with go pro. And I was like, oh yeah, I'm in this thing. Senior year, I was there just to play football. I was like, God is good, keep me blessed, keep me healthy, and one day get me wealthy. But honestly, you know, you know, got that signing bonus. I remember sitting at the locker room and I was like, I'm rich. We sat there and darn near cried. I think it was like the happiest moment of my life and the saddest, most pitiful moment of my life because I was like, they robbed me. But these are the details of the first rookie deal. You know, I'm looking at houses like, yeah, I'm gonna buy a million dollar house. Oh, I'm gonna buy, you know, a vet. I'm gonna buy a BMW. I was like, I'm gonna go crazy, hit a high eight. They ain't never gonna see what happens. But I, I was like, what if I don't play another down after this? I was like, what if this is the only contract that I get? I was like, I gotta make this last forever. My rookie year, I was like, don't blow it, Cam. You look at these, these telltales of sports athletes or guys who were rich and went broke and you can always see it was the multiple houses. It was, it was multiple cars. It was loaning money out to family members and never getting that loan back. That's not a loan, that's giving. Don't ask for a loan if you don't mean it. Um, so I implemented like a, a two strike rule with all my friends. Like, if you need me, I'm there for you the first time. But at the end of that two strikes, we're probably no longer that tight anymore. So it allows you to wean out some people. I got that second deal and I had the same mentality. I was like, the first deal, I live on. The second deal was like, this is my life money. Like, hey, after this, this is a great career. This is what I have to live on. This is how I have to get my kids to college. And I don't even think I had kids at the time. I was like, but this is generational money. And these are the details of the contract extension. Now we talked about how I made and saved my money. Now I guess we're gonna talk about how I spent some of these chickens. All right, if I remember correctly, the first thing I bought, it was a Brightling Super Avenger, and it was like 2,800 bucks. And I was like, bro, I'm balling. Um, and then at the time, Black Ice was, was, was in. I had a fully bust down Black Diamond, another Super Avenger. I think it was like 12. So we're at 15 right there. But then I needed a necklace to go with it. I had the, the meteorites dripping off the neck. You know, I had the big black diamond pieces, probably 70 pointers. I probably had like half carrots on each one. I think it was like 10, so that's 25 right there. But then I, I saw myself spend that kind of money and was like, I was like, what am I doing? And I ended up losing my, my Super Avenger. And that was back before I knew like you needed jewelry insurance for this thing. No, I lost the, uh, the necklace. I just found the Super Avenger. You don't have the insurance, you don't get nothing back. It is what it is. So I spent 25 bands on jewelry. I'm a millionaire, so, so I thought, um, until the government came through, so I had that. And I, I rocked the hell out of them watches. If it was time to go out, you, you might see both of them. I might've been the first one to double up, because I thought I was like, I thought I was doing the most. The next move was I had a car from college. I had a 2007 Dodge Charger that I got from my parents for getting you know, a scholarship to the University of California at Berkeley. And I thought I was going to just use that for, for, for the rest of my life. You know, my, my, my whip, that was my baby. But my sister crashed her car over a Boise or something like that. So I gave her my whip and bought a whip. I was like, man, I'm gonna get an Audi. I'm gonna get a BMW. I started seeing Audi, BMW, Mercedes prices. I was like, you know what? I'm in New Orleans, they got, they, the streets got potholes. Like, you know, it's a little rough down here when you're driving through. 
it's not a smooth ride. I, I justified it. I don't need that right now. Plus, I haven't earned shit in the league. Like, I haven't done anything in the league for me to just be whipping up in a, in a hundred thousand dollar car. So I was like, you know, let me humble myself. I got a, a Chevy Tahoe, a little floor model. So I got a nice little discount on her. I think she was like thirty nine cash. And I showed up like I showed up like fifty cent and get Richard Dice trying. I showed up with a forty band trap on me. You know, I was like, I was like, yeah, you can count the change, like. So they had a, they're like, we don't normally do that. I said, bro, I brought cash. Like, this is my first car I'm buying. I bought, I brought cash. I had to call like two managers in, had to call like, it was so much to do, but they bought the car. That's what it sounded like too. I was like, I was like, are you, are you ready for this? I was really living my best life at 21. I was like, yeah, I'm like that. And then I went to Vegas. And I was like, bro, I've been going to Vegas since I was like 18. We used to drive down from Cal, go, went to Vegas a couple times, you know, I had to do it proper, you know, I wanna show my boys love, you know, it is what it is. We got rooms comped, whatever it is, but we, we out in the nightlife, it's us. Table on deck, you catch that first bill for the table, they're like, oh yeah, you know, Patron like 400, you know, Ciroc like 400. Probably ordered a bottle of Ace of Spades. Back then it was probably what, like a band, 1200, 1500. But all in all, that first Vegas trip was probably 10 racks. I was like, all right, I gotta get to a sense of home. Like, what am I doing? My mom was like, oh, I want a new car. And at that same weekend, I was like, Psh, I got it. Like, if I can spend 10 on the boys, I got it. It was like 15 Vegas, 15, 20 with mom. My next highest expense was finding an apartment, a condo, you know, for the year. I stayed in there for what, five years? You figure two grams, 60 months, 120 bands right there just off of living in New Orleans alone off the first contract. Just living expenses. They didn't even eat or nothing. Like, wasn't even going on dates yet. Bruh. Like, that's big stacks. Living expenses. Which leads me to food for all the D linemen would be my most expense, like my most powerful expense. Like they were taxing me at every turn. It was, like I said, it was breakfast on Mondays and it was 13 or 14 guys, 10 of them were vets, we're getting breakfast for all of them. And they wanted this place in New Orleans. It was, used to be famous for breakfast for us. It was Mano's Po' Boys. Double hash browns, double sausage, bacon, egg, croissant witches or whatever they were, the big greasy fat boys. I was like, bro, this is not how athletes are supposed to eat. But we ate them things religiously every Monday. Then it was the 10 dozen of donuts for the, the locker room. I had to gift my, my D-line gift cards uh, from Best Buy at like 1500 ahead for every OG. I had 10 OGs after like looking at it. That was probably somewhere north of 10 grand. So that's 25 right there. Then the rookie dinner alone, them guys was out there eating filet mignon, steak, lobster, and taking some to go. They were drinking Dom, Perignon, they were, uh, you know, Ace of Spades, whatever it was, it was always expensive. I didn't even know wine could cost more than 40 bucks at the time. They were ordering two and three and $400 bottles of wine. You know, like Halo, 500. I'm clearly tagged, because 10 years later, I'm still talking about it. I'm like, bro, like, they were tagging me at every turn. It was Opus One. I think they threatened me, like, man, we should open up a Screaming Eagle. And I was like, what is a Screaming Eagle? Glad they didn't, but there was, you know, I brought a, a bottle of King Louis. I think they ordered another bottle King Louis the 13th, which is, you know, 3,300 uh, a bottle. I ended up paying like 22, 23 bands that night. So all in all, food gifts for my rookie year hit me for about a 50 piece. We're not even gonna talk about the, the nights after winning, cause somehow we won and we would spend more. Like we'd end up at clubs and of course, and be like, hey, Rook, it's your night. And you just be looking like, what do you mean it's my night? <laughs> I'm looking at guys who have, you know, $40 million contracts, $60 million contracts, $30 million contracts. I'm like, how is this my night? Sheesh. When we talking about, you know, helping friends out, that's probably another 10 bands right there. Being a, a, in a precarious situation and they call you late night for help and you gotta help your boy. Again, the two strike rule comes in. Got you on the first one. That second one is hit or miss and there is no third one. But that was probably 10 bands helping the boys from home back. You know, like, oh, I need help this, that third. Hey, they got a boot on my car, I'm down 1200. Hey, baby mom's hit me and I'm back on child support. Uh, what else do you hear? <laughs> bro, you you catch every story in the book, man. You know, Brandy got dialysis and you're like, damn. You know, mom's ain't working no more, damn. It's like, you feel for your boy, you help out. It's like, all right, so you gonna pay me back? Yeah, and then the payback never happens. So you just out of money.
second or third year in the league, I bought a house in Arizona. And I, you know, I was like, I need my own spot. You know, that's I gotta do this. And I think it cost me like 530. And I paid for cash. I felt like I was the king of that thing. I was like, and that's why I'm the king. Paid all this cash. It's in the same neighborhood I was. I grew up in. My mom and grandma live in one house. My dad lives next door. 10, 11 houses down from my dad is my house on the opposite side of the road. Then like another 15 houses down is my sister and her husband. And then two houses down from them is my brother and her and his wife. We're all in the same community, bro. I have a golf cart. I went that thing. Back when I bought it, it, we were all single at the time. I had a pool in the backyard. You know, it was it was all beautiful. Three bedrooms. And now I got four kids, so now now we get now we gotta move. Huh. I don't wanna talk about it. I made my first Pro Bowl like year three and then I got like a starter pack. You know, I got I got an athlete, I made it starter pack is what I call it. It's a Rolex, it's, a, it's like a small chain and a big chain. That was 30 racks cash. I got it on a good deal. I got it for like 29 change. And I was like, I can't pass this up, I need it. I got a nice little, you know, a nice little chain to go with it. And that chain was probably like five. And then I was like, you know what? He need a big brother. I was like, I made my first Pro Bowl. You know, we get money for this. You know, I'm doing some things. I'm doing some good things in my life. Like, I need to flex a little bit. I added rubies to the grill. So I had to get a new grill. So the grill was like a band. Oh, I got the big chain. 14 karat gold out there. Big Cuban links. I had to get a gold bracelet to go with it too. And then I broke it one time when I was, when I was drunk and I never saw it again. But I, I spent like 30 on the chain, 30 on the watch, another five on, on, on a, a smaller chain, another like three on, on the bracelet. A seven bag. Oh, you have a baby. Now you gotta take care of your baby and the mother as a gift. But baby girl was in, a, in like this A3 and I'm 6'4", 285 pounds. Like I'm not fitting in that. And I was like, you wanna put my son in this thing? Like we're not putting my son in this death trap that you brought from college. You know, like you, you had the same thing, like we're not doing it. So then I was like, yo, we're gonna get you a little Honda Odyssey, like so those, you know, little van. And of course her, her automatic response was, I'm not a soccer mom, but like this, you know, there's some extras that happen. So either way she gets a Q5 and that Q5 was a 40 piece. I was like, let's just go ahead and get you the uh, the Q7. I was like, cause of, well, you know, once you start, we gonna be in that thing. All I know is my son needs a friend, like, and I need two boys. The following year, like 13 months apart, we had a girl. That Q5 was a little tight. And then we had uh, my daughter, Nia Grace, you know, and I was like, all right, babe, like we gonna go ahead and get you a, a Chevy, Chevy Suburban. And she's like, well, you can go ahead and I, was, I always wanted to escalate. Of course you did, me too. But I said, yo, like, I'm, I'm here for these Chevy prices. So I lost and she got her uh, Cadillac Escalade, traded in, I think we got like 25 back, traded that in, we spent like 60 piece. So all in, we were probably 70 grand into a car. And I've still got my same 2011 Chevy Tahoe. That's my only whip. I feel like Kawhi Leonard. Like, I don't know if he, had, if he drives whips or just shows up. After my like third or fourth Pro Bowl, I was like, you know what, treat yourself, Cam. I think I gave like money to my brother, some money to my sister. It was like, you know, a couple grand here, a couple grand there, money to moms and dad. But then I bought a 5711 paddock, uh, silver, blue face. That was like a 30 piece. And then I bought a 5980 and that thing was like 50 change. And then the rest I gave to the fam. So that was easy 90 out the door. And now both them paddocks is worth who? Triple? I'm gonna say on the low side, triple, to keep it kind, because God is good. I, only one I wish I regretted, I wish I would've bought her the damn extended Escalade out the gate. I didn't know I was gonna have this many kids. I went from 24 with no kids to 28 with four kids, and I said, how did we get here? You got nobody to blame but yourself. If I take out the house, it probably spent me like eight years to spend a million dollars. I had the house, it probably took me like four. Five. If you need a buffer, that, I'm not gonna lie to you, that's what your financial advisor and your agent is for. You need people who 
can say no and be the bad guy. Sometimes if you're not willing to be the villain, get your financial advisor to say no. And that's on tickets, that's on hotel rooms, that's on flying people in and out, that's on whatever it is. Get yourself a no person because you're gonna have plenty of yes people in your life. Love the sport, that's what got you there. And like always continue trying to put yourself in a better place for not only you, but your family as well. And I appreciate you guys for tuning in over at GQ Sports. It's Cam Jordan, New Orleans Saints defensive end. And this is how I spent, this is how I burned through and never got back my first million dollars.